Thank you for joining us for worship today. A number of things in the news and notes to point out. Uh, first, the insert about VBS uh, that is coming next month. It seems to be coming faster and faster. Uh, so if you are interested in joining, signing up for this, or if you know of anyone who would be interested, uh, please share this information uh, for signing up for that. Uh, a happy Mother's Day to all of uh, you mothers here today. Uh, be sure on your way out uh, to grab a flower uh, in honor of uh, your great uh, godly work uh, in being mothers. So thank you for that. Uh, we are having an Ascension Day service uh, this Thursday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. That'll be uh, right after Kids for Christ. And so uh, please join us uh, for that feast day. Uh, if anyone is interested in gathering a group uh, for the Memorial Day Parade, uh, to represent Holy Cross, please contact Ellen. Uh, the contact info is in the bulletin, and there's more information uh, if you're interested in, in leading that for us. We started our new membership class uh, yesterday. Uh, we had a good turnout. Uh, if anyone is interested in attending that, either becoming a new member or just a refresher on uh, what we believe in the small catechism, uh, it's not too late to join. Uh, you will be doing Saturdays from, from last, yesterday up into the end of June. So uh, please do let me know, and, and we'd love to have you with us. Uh, we are starting up on May 23rd. We're starting up Tuesday morning Bible class. Uh, we've been on a break through the year, but now that Kids for Christ is going to be finishing, uh, I have a little bit of extra time. So we're going to be doing that Tuesday morning Bible class through the summer. That will be on Tuesdays from 10 to 11, and we're going to be going through the book of Acts. So uh, we'd love to have anyone who is able to join us, uh, join us for that class. Uh, and then uh, lastly, a special thank you to everyone uh, who put together and attended uh, the baby shower for, for Gaius yesterday. Uh, we had a great time. Thank you for all of the, the gifts and the wonderful snacks and food. Uh, it's truly a blessing to, to have that. So thank you, everyone, uh, who is a part of that. For our service today, we'll be using Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. And we're going to hear from Jesus in the Gospel lesson. Uh, he's going to talk about a helper that he will be sending. Uh, and also, he gives uh, the statement, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so we're going to look at those statements uh, and what Jesus means and how those things go together. We will begin with our opening hymn, hymn 645.
We begin on page 184. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve the temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of a holy, innocent, bitter suffering and death. Of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. By your appointment they stand this day, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
the epistles from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your heart regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that, be, if that should be God's will, than doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this now saying, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our historic Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today hits on an important fact to remember. The world does not know God. We hear in the first reading from Acts that these Gentiles worship an unknown God. And in the Gospel lesson, we hear Jesus tell us that the world does not see or know the spirit of truth. And so the fact is that one can only know God by the work of the Holy Spirit. It can be easy to look at the world and see the evidence that they do not know God. Look at all of the evil that the world commits against each other, harm to individuals. Look at the myriad of false religions claiming to know the true God, but being far from it. And look at the persecution against the church that the unbelievers constantly attack God's people, seeking to destroy them. Why can't these people know him? Because they have rejected him. In the first reading from Acts, St. Paul preaches Christ and the resurrection to them, yet many mock him and reject that gospel. In the epistle lesson, St. Peter speaks of the unbelieving people during the days of Noah. And we remember the evils that they committed, evil so great that God sought to destroy all of the unbelieving world. They reject God, and no doubt mocked Noah during his time of building this ark that would save him and his family. And Jesus, in the Gospel lesson, says they cannot receive the Spirit because they do not know God. When you reject the work of God, you cannot know Him. But do not think that you are so great because you know God. Remember that you only know Him because of the work of the Holy Spirit within you. St. Paul can only preach the gospel, Jesus and the resurrection, because God came to him on that road to Damascus, converted him out of his unbelief, and gave him this gospel to preach. Noah was only saved from the flood because God came to him and told him to build the ark. You, likewise, are only saved because God comes to you in and through baptism to save you from your sin and from death. And Jesus says in the gospel that God sends you the help, the Holy Spirit, which is what we will see fulfilled on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descends upon the apostles. And in verse 25, beyond our text for today, Jesus doubles down on this fact when he says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. It is only by the Holy Spirit that the disciples, who seemingly throughout Jesus' earthly ministry did not picture true faith, the Holy Spirit comes to them, and they then go on throughout the entire work of the early church to preach the gospel in boldness to the world. It comes down to that fact that one can only know God by the work of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. But this is something to rejoice in. For imagine if it was your responsibility to come and to know God. First, you would have to discover Him. You, a sinful, fallen person, trying to discover and find out the works and ways of Almighty, perfect God. Then if you were somehow able to discover that He existed, you would then have to conjure up on your own the faith to believe in such a perfect deity. And then somehow, if miraculously you made it to that point, then you would have to perfectly, without error, keep his law. 
It's an impossible task if left to yourself. But God promises to be with you. As we heard in the Gospel text, Jesus says in verses 16 and 17, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Jesus gives you the Holy Spirit the one who you receive in holy baptism, the third person of the Trinity who is with you forever, strengthening your faith and leading you in this sanctified life. Jesus continues in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. God does not leave you on your own to fulfill all that he has commanded you to do, but he is with you always. He is with you to care for you, and you are with him. And he says, because he lives, having died on the cross and raised to life, you too will share in that eternity. And then in verse 21, whoever has my commandments keeps them. He it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. We've talked about in the previous weeks different ways that Christ manifests himself to his people. He, the Word incarnate, is spoken here in this place in the readings and the preaching of Scripture. He is present in the Lord's Supper, where he gives his own body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, giving life and salvation. Christ has manifested himself to you, those who love him. God has never left any part of salvation for you to do on your own. He always does all of the work for you. We see this in the Old Testament. God does not save the people of Israel because they merit this salvation or that by their own clever ingenuity and strategy they get their way out of their problems. No, the people of Israel are helpless to save themselves, yet God comes in and saves them by his mighty power time and time again. In the New Testament, Jesus comes down from his heavenly throne, takes on all of your sins, and goes to the cross in your place. You do not deserve the salvation that he wins, but he goes to the cross to suffer for you, so that you may be spared from that suffering and death. And even in the early church, we see the work of the Holy Spirit that he works through the apostles and the church to spread the gospel, that saving news of Christ, to Jerusalem, to Israel, and to all of the world. God is with you to love you and to be your helper. And because of this great love that he has for you, you then love him in return. How do you show this love? By keeping his commandments. You do not love someone by ignoring their commands and disobeying them, not following what they wish you to do. One might think the statement, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, is spoken by a mother chastising her disobedient child. But these are the words of Jesus. That if you love me, then you will listen to what I have told you. You will follow what I have commanded. If you love God, you listen to what he says. But remember that you have help in this, a divine helper. The helper, the Holy Spirit, he is the one who helps you in this sanctified life. In Luther's small catechism, in the explanation of the third article of the Creed, He begins by saying, I believe that I cannot 
by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. He then goes on to explain that it is the work of the Holy Spirit who brings us to faith in Christ and allows us to follow him and do the good work set before us. It is completely the work of God, even to help you love him and to help keep his commandments. It is all the work of God out of love for you. The one who rejects God cannot know him, but the one who knows him loves him. The one who loves him will strive to keep his commandments, but not without his divine help. This help is given to the apostles on Pentecost and is given to you in holy baptism. The Holy Spirit to guide you, to bring you into that salvation that baptism gives, that you may be saved in him. May you, by that help of the Holy Spirit, strive to know and love God as he has loved and striven for you on the cross to save you from sin and eternal death. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for the offertory on page 192. Please stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us, that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith in you may be strengthened, love towards others increase, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest, and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. We especially pray for Eddie, Ken, Bill, Harvey, Alan, Judy, Rebecca, Mike, Marv, Anne, Darlene, Edith, Roy, and all of our shut-ins. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Lord, in your mercy. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. We thank you for the gifts of mothers, and we pray that you would bless them in their vocation that you give them in this life. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own that we may live under him in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should.
good at all times and in all places, give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and for the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you
please stand for the Nunc Dimittis on page 199. Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.